In this video, we're taking the high-speed KTX bullet train from Seoul to Busan. We'll show Seoul Station and what our train experience was like. We spent two full days in Seoul and had a really good time there, especially trying out unlimited tapaki and, of course, lots of fried chicken. Our journey starts at Seoul Station, where we will take the train that takes us to Busan in a little under three hours. However, to even get to the train if you're transferring from the Seoul Metro is an adventure in itself. When you're still in the metro part of the station, you'll find these very handy conveyor belts that take your heavy luggage up the stairs for you. It takes a little longer, but it saves energy and is really fun. We collected our bags and went looking for the KTX signs, the train that we were going to take. And everything was really well signed and we just followed along. And it all went well until... Where's the conveyor belt? No more conveyor belt. Luckily, carrying luggage is no issue for Lawrence, so he went up the stairs without the conveyor belt. To show your appreciation for this heroic act, please hit the like button on this video and make sure to subscribe to our channel. We appreciate it! We made it to the train station and since we decided to travel on a sunny Saturday, it was very busy with lots of people trying to leave the city. As for the tickets, there are multiple options. You can buy them online, however, the website can be a bit confusing and didn't accept our card. Then there are the ticket machines that are a good option, but also only accept domestic cards. So you have to pay your tickets in cash. Lastly, there is a large ticket counter where you can pay by international card and also buy tickets in advance for your return journey. Just make sure that you know which train you want to take back because the lines are long and the salespeople move fast. Our train was already waiting for us about 15 minutes before departure. The train comes with numbered seats and ours were seats 9A and 9B on the single to last card of the train. And for a one-way second class ticket from Seoul to Busan, we paid 41 euros per person. The Netflix decorated train was super long, so we walked for a bit, but here we are. In the train, there are separate luggage spaces for luggage that's bigger than a carry-on size. And of course, there are also toilets on board. Like I said, our seats were seats 9A and 9B, and they were right in the middle of the train carriage, which was, well, not great. If we can give you one piece of advice, it's to avoid these seats at all costs. There is almost no leg room, and when the train is fully booked, it's just an uncomfortable experience for everyone involved in the four-seater. We didn't know this beforehand and booked on a busy day last minute, so we didn't pay attention to it, and we really regretted that. Luckily, on our way back, we did have two seats next to each other, and those make for a really good train experience. They have power outlets, ample leg room, footrest, and your very own table. You do have a table at the four-seater as well, but it's definitely smaller. <laughs> Our train left right on time and as we were leaving Seoul, we enjoyed the view.
After almost three hours of sitting not so very comfortably, we made it to Busan. The train ride was smooth and we arrived on time. And our train arrived at the very end of the track, so we had to walk for a bit and then follow the signs to get to the main building of Busan Station. The signage is good, so it's easy to find your way out. From Busan Station, you can transfer to the Busan Metro Line, or in our case, make our way to our hotel. We stayed at the Asti Hotel right next to the station, but more about that in our next video when we review this hotel. We enjoyed taking you with us to Busan and we hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget that if you want to see more, subscribe to us at Jess and Explore. Bye!